So my wife and I spoke at the last meeting regarding the hair policy. We have two children that go to school in this district. Going into the last meeting, we honestly didn't have the expectation, but we certainly hoped that the board was made up of empathetic, knowledgeable, and caring people. That they would quickly see the utter contradiction in teaching children how to be successful and good citizens, while at the same time showing them by example that it's okay to punish and humiliate those that look different as long as it's in the rule book. Quite frankly, I am disappointed in you. So we are back again, still hoping that you are reasonable, wise, and empathetic, and that we simply misunderstood. Is that possible? Why are we still wondering over a month later? Because although numerous attempts at contact have been made by my wife to the board, looking for any comment on the matter, we're still waiting. We have hoped for any response that things are at least being considered, but nothing. What I've heard about is continued enforcement of the rule and even its recent application to some students with known disabilities. Not to mention what we already know from the well-spoken students that spoke at the last meeting that have lost opportunities because of you. Because the buck stops here, right? The buck stops with you. Where I'm from, which is here, telling an autistic elementary school student who has sensory issues that he must get his hair cut is unconscionable and just mean. Let me make this clear. Specially abled, non-binary, or just like, or people who just like having long hair because that's how they feel the best about themselves, being discriminatory against them is just wrong, and it's all discrimination. As Tristan's dad said last time, come on, it's hair. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but what I really hope you realize is the volumes your silence speaks. And I understand why you're silent. The main responses bandied about in the past and current have been, it's legal and we can do it if we want to. It's the equivalent of bully speak, which is exactly what you're not supposed to be teaching our kids. In the end though, do you really want to be remembered in the same light as a litany of previous discriminatory rules that were legal but still incredibly wrong? That's where we're going with this. I notice that for the agenda tonight, there's a section regarding pending grievances. Imagine at least some of them are related to the hair policy. So here's what I picture. I picture the board asking, can we really get in trouble for this? Will it affect our funding because of clear violations of Title IX? Could we actually lose in court? What kind of blowback will there be for us? And finally, could this affect my future in politics? There's only one question that needs to be asked. The answer should be patently obvious to everyone as it is to everyone else behind everyone else in front of you. Should we continue to ask yourselves, should we continue discriminating against students based on how they look? If the answer is yes, then you all have a lot of soul searching to do. We're all Texans. This is the future of Texas. We're a diverse group. Please join us. Thank you. All right.